Hello, I'm Carl Van with International Insurance Institute, and I'm delighted to be able to present this exceptional claims customer service program. I would like to start off by asking you to help me with a little exercise. Let me ask you to finish this sentence. My job as a claims professional would be so much easier if the customers would just blank. Think about it for a second. What things did you come up with? When I teach our customer service courses, I like to ask my students that, and usually they will say things like, listen, remember, be reasonable, be patient, stop calling, trust me, just tell us what they want, cooperate, understand, a long list. As a claims professional, do you have any control over whether or not someone is listening to you at any time? Do you have any control over this whatsoever? Well, actually, the answer is yes. You have tremendous control. If you think that you don't have control over whether or not someone is listening, then you probably have been working much too hard. The point of this customer service class is to improve customer service skills, but also make the claims job easier. And would it make your job easier if you learned things that you could do to make people listen to you? and avoid certain things that you do to make people stop listening. How about remembering what you say? Do you have any control over whether or not people remember what you say? Do you have any influence over that at all? Again, the answer is yes. Right now, the way we give information, we tend to have people remember only about 20% of what we say. What's the proof of that? How many times have you given a lot of information to a customer just to have them turn around and ask you questions. Usually about what? About what you just said. And so what do you do? You answer the questions. And what do they do? They ask more questions. And what do you do? You answer them, and now you're just playing ping pong back and forth. What if there was a way to push that 20% that people remember up to about 60 or 70%? Would that be valuable for you? Would that make your job a little bit easier? How about be patient? Do you have any control over whether or not people are patient? Well, you certainly can't make someone be patient. But very often there are things that we tend to do that make people be impatient. In claims, we use certain words and phrases that tell someone to be impatient. We're trying to get them to be patient, but it has the exact opposite effect. Do you have any control over whether or not people are being reasonable? Again, you can't make someone be reasonable, but there are some very common phrases and things that we do in claims that tend to make people seem unreasonable. Before we continue on, let me give you a quick example of that. When I'm monitoring phone calls, I hear claims people all of the time basically say the worst thing you can say. They will say things like, Mr. Insured, I know you want your entire roof replaced, but you only have a few shingles damaged. Now you're going to have to be reasonable. Mr. Insured, I know you want $60 a day for home health care, but your policy only allows $15 a day. Now you need to be reasonable. We say things like this in order to get the customer to be reasonable. But here's what I want you to think about. As soon as you tell someone they're going to have to do anything, what automatically goes through their mind? I don't have to do anything. And as a matter of fact, you've just planted a seed in their mind that they won't like it. Also, when you tell someone they're going to have to be reasonable, what did you just call them? Exactly. You've called them unreasonable. With the goal of getting them to change their mind, you just call them a name. You called them an unreasonable person. And you know what you're going to get back from a customer most of the time when you say something like that? You're going to get back, I am being reasonable. Now you actually have the customer admitting that if they change their mind, they've been an unreasonable person. (laughs) Can you make someone be reasonable? No, but you have a tremendous influence over whether or not they will be by the things that you say and do. How about stop calling? Do you have any control over this? Well, actually, you do have a great deal of control over this. There are certain things that we say in claims that tend to make people want to call us back. We don't know we're doing them. But there are things that we do and say in a conversation that make people call us. We just don't know it. How about trust us? Do you have any control over that? 
Well, believe it or not, we have tremendous influence over whether or not people trust us. In claims, we use a wide variety of words and phrases that most psychologists tell us is a way to send a message for this person not to trust us. Here's a good example, willing to. We often say things like that. We're willing to pay you $5,000 for your auto. We're willing to pay you $5,000 for your stolen television set. The problem with the words willing to is that it means I'd really rather not, and I wouldn't if I didn't have to, but I'm willing to. You see, that's a very different message. To tell someone that you're willing to do something tells them you don't want to do it, and you're only doing it because you're trapped. That's a very different message than, Mr. Insured, your claim is worth up to $5,000, and I want to make sure you get everything you're entitled to. You see, there are certain ways that we can say things that make people want to trust us. Unfortunately, many times we get caught up in using the wrong ones. How about tell us what they want? Do we have any control over this? Well, as someone who monitors phone calls all over different insurance companies in different countries, I can tell you that most of the time, customers are telling us exactly what they want. We're just not listening. In order to deliver outstanding customer service, we have to be good listeners. And oftentimes, we miss the boat here. How about cooperate? Can we make people cooperate? Would that make our job easier if we can get people to cooperate? Well, we do have a great deal of control over this as well. You can't make someone cooperate, but there is a three-step process that we're going to be learning that has a tremendous impact on whether or not people want to cooperate. Rather than the way we get people to cooperate now, which can often sound like a threat or an ultimatum, we're going to use a three-step process that makes people want to cooperate. How about understand? Do you have any control over whether or not someone understands you? Well, hopefully they've read their policy. But you know what? If customers are listening when we're talking, if they remember what we say, and if they're in a reasonable state of mind, if they're patient enough to let us do our job and they trust us, and we're listening to what it is that they really want, there's a very good chance they're going to understand what we have to tell them. So let me ask you this. This course is four chapters long. If after taking all four of the chapters of this customer service course, you could get customers to listen to you better, remember more of what you said, be much more reasonable, be more patient, stop calling as much, trust you more, be upfront about what it is that they want, cooperate much more, and understand you better. If you could get all of that, would that be a few hours well spent? Well, that's it. That's the outline for this customer service claims course. We're going to cover every single one of these topics, but at every turn, we're going to be talking about the impact of customer service. Believe it or not, if we accomplish all of these goals, we will greatly improve customer service, increase retention, and make our jobs much, much easier in the process. So let's get started.